Hey, you guys. Um, first of all, let me get this out of the way. Um, I got my eye covered. I'm about to do Loving Hip Hop, um, season four, episode 12. But I got my eye covered because I woke up, my eye was swollen, I went to the hospital, they said I had a sty. So, I'm going to still do my videos, y'all know me. If I ain't dying, I'm going to have my videos up. But I got my face covered. So, if you see my bangs move and see that my eye messed up, don't think nobody punched me in my face because it ain't going down like that out here. <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm -mm. Um, but anyway... Let's get on to why they tricked us and made Love and Hip Hop come on tonight. Mona, you ain't fooling nobody. You just wanted us to watch Basketball Wives LA or whatever, because you know we needed them. You needed them views, so um, we'll roll with it. We'll roll with it. But anyway, it started off where it left off last week um, with Rashida knocking on actually Nicole's door. And I told y'all last week that Kirk was not going to be in that fucking room. So, she bust up in the door. First of all, Rashida, I understand you the VP, you the boss's wife, you this and that. But you and your homegirl would have had a couple of bumps and bruises and knots. I'm just saying. You don't barge in nobody's room. Regardless if you think your dude in there, bitch, you would have got, I'm telling you. It wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have worked out as you planned. Security would have had to be on deck. I'm just saying, you don't just bust up in nobody's room and think, bitch, I'm telling you, them ankles would have been broke because she went in there with heels on. And Erica, bitch, you didn't go in there to fight. You came in there to be nosy and, and to see what was going to pop up, like she said. So she gets in there and she busts through the door looking for Kurt, looking dumb, looking fucking ratchet as hell, um, and got molded. Ashley Nicole is part of the LGBT community, and she ain't got time for a big throat ass Kurt. Like she, her girlfriend was in there, and they both looking at her like, "What the fuck are you doing, Rashida? Like, yo man ain't in here now. You look dumb. You got egg all up on your motherfucking face because don't nobody want him. I'm looking for Kurt, but bitch, he ain't there now. What? Then I was so mad that she didn't even fucking." Apologize for her fucking actions. I'm sorry. You're supposed to be a VP. You're supposed to be a first woman about yours. Like, come on now. And the way you went in there and got molded and you didn't apologize right then and there and still try to call this girl all kind of thoughts. Like, come on. She was straight fucking out of line. Her little sidekick would have got boo bop because, bitch, this ain't your husband. So you really all fair game to get her ass whooped. Then when the girlfriend was like, what the fuck is going on? She was like, I'm looking for my husband. Just trying to make it seem like, you know, Ashley was fucking with Kirk. So the girl like, what the fuck? Like, that whole thing was bogus as fucking bullshit. Let's go on and finish and get them out the way. So she goes to Kirk's room and go tell him what happened. He laughing at the shit. She mad that he's laughing or whatever, but he's also turned on at the same damn time. I'm sitting there like, you need to, like, check your wife. Um, now, I know Kirk is fucked up, but I'm sorry. He just needs to check his wife, especially if this is supposed to be a real business situation. She should have got checked for the way she handled things or whatever. And I would have just said something to her just just to throw something up in her face and like, bitch, you got molded. Like, uh, Rashida just irritated me. Especially supposed to be in a grown ass boss, bitch, but she keeps doing immature ass fucking things. So, Scrampy and Bambi, they're, um, chilling. We ain't seen, you know, them have a conversation since, what, the first episode or whatever, but okay, we're all with it. She cooking him something to eat. He comes in there and he's saying how. You know, he's seeing everybody being happy with mom dudes and Ernest getting engaged and all that kind of stuff. So he wants to step up his game with the band. So he goes and pulls out this box and gives her this gift. And she like, I hope this shit ain't no remix to the promise ring that you gave me. I fell out. Because Bambi is not with Marion motherfucking Scrappy right about now. She know he's full of bullshit and he got things to work on. And I'm glad that she's looking at it like that. Like, I'm glad that she's not looking at it like, oh, this is Scrappy. You know how these bitches are on these shows. 
Bone is a scrappy, let me hurry up and back and load or whatever. But no, she's not looking at it like that. And she's telling, you know, he ended up giving her a box and it had a key to his home. I guess he wants her to move in or just have a key to his house. So, you know, I was zoning out on them. But did he tell her that he wanted her to move in or did he just give her the key? Because, you know, girls be... You get a key and then the girl think, you know, she take it somewhere else and say, oh, no, he said move in. I don't know if I heard that part. But he said that's a big step for him, you know, to give a girl a key to his house. And I'm sitting there like, no, it ain't. You can always change your locks. Like, I don't know. I don't know why girls think this is a commitment step if a guy give you the key. It's the same way he gave you that key, he can change them damn locks. That doesn't, that doesn't show he's committed. That just shows you that he can't bring the thoughts home. He got to take them somewhere else. That's all that is. Um, but I like how she told him, you know, if they, if that's what he really wanted, wanted to be serious about the situation, then he needs to work things out with Erica. They need to fix that shit. You know, she's going to be more involved in a little girl's life and stuff like that. So they really got to fix that. And he don't want to fight with Erica, but he would, he would go and talk to her and deal with her because, you know, every time it's them two in the same room, it's all hell break loose. But he's willing to go and talk to Erica and work on co-parenting. He goes, talk to Erica, and that's just exactly what they came up with. That they're going to try to figure out how can they co-parent and be cool with each other. And she over there like, oh, that's all I wanted from Scrappy. I'm like, bitch, you say that every goddamn season. And when he ain't fucking you the way you want to be by the reunion, then you, you put him on blast So. We'll, we'll see how cool you are with this agreement by the end, by the reunion part, Erica. I just don't see you being on board. And I, I just, uh, I, I'm irritated by Erica. Um, me, 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 up with Jazzy Say because she needs to go apologize to him for all of the drama that happened or whatever. And I'm sitting there like, hmm. This happened when these girls first got to Atlanta. And I understand she say she's been going through some things. But you're not going to wait months to come and apologize to me for you and your artist fucked up actions. Like, months? And expect me to still work with you? Okay. Well, we know they have a, you know, a personal relationship as far as friends. So, maybe... You know, he wasn't tripping, but as far as business-wise, you can't be waiting months to go apologize and think these people still going to want to work with you, Mimi. That's just, like, word of advice. I, I just, okay. But she go apologize to him, and he cool with her, so he accepts her apology. But basically, he ain't fucking with the, um, dying peace. He told her to be careful about the ratchetry, you know, the company that she keeps. So he was, so she was like, so the pink hair girl is out. He was like, yeah, but he will work, he's willing to work with Tiffany Fox. And I'm so here for it. If you guys go onto their YouTube or Instagram or whatever, I'm so here for him working with Tiffany Fox over Dime Peace. She is the way better rapper, got way she's prettier. She, uh, it's just something about her that, it's more potential with Tiffany Fox than it with Dime Peace. Then, after Dime Peace had performed her song last week of Disrespectful, and I thought that shit was so disrespectful to my ears, but okay, um, I went and searched her music on YouTube, and um, that song is like two to three years old, and I'm sitting there like, so this old-ass song, and then I'm praying that you have matured since then and this is the song you want to perform on love and hip-hop to brand yourself and show everybody you pick a song that you had two years ago so to me like is your rapping skill still on that two years ago shit um i well i don't know i wouldn't buy it i wouldn't download it i'm just saying something about her that i just wouldn't waste my time and i feel what jazzy say feel like she wouldn't waste his time either um, 
But like I said, he wouldn't have worked with an old girl. But he's not, you know, you know, me, me, like, oh, so you got music for me. You got some, you know, a track for me, you know, to get her. He's like, no, I got to see her perform first. I got to see what she's about first. Um, So we got to, now she got to get, go talk to Tiffany Fox and, you know, square things out with her because Tiffany Fox said she wasn't fucking with her neither after that last meeting. So she goes to Tiffany Fox and, you know, she apologized to her. You know, Tiffany Fox still looking at her like the ain't fucking with you. But once she brings up the whole Jazzy Faye and how Jazzy Faye not fucking with Dime Peace, she, you know, she got a little chuckle from that and how Don, um, he wants to do something with her. And so she was cool with that. So now, you know, that's showing her that Mimi is trying to do something in the right direction. She's saying how she has all her mixtape is almost finished. She just needs that song with Stevie J to complete her mixtape. So I hope, you know, she get what she needs to get because I, I want to hear what she got to say. Um, let's get this bullshit out of the way. Uh, Jack goes to, what's her name, Katie's house. And, you know, remember she told him, if you want to be with me, you got to prove to me that you want to be with me. So, his proof to be with her is that he got divorced from his wife. He finalized the divorce, and now he got to go tell Cena that, you know, he can't be throwing her mixed signals either, that he wants to be with Katie. KD, if you think this is what show's going to show you that he wants to be faithful, you just as dumb and delusional as I thought. Like, come on. Him finalizing that divorce, he wasn't with her. So, okay. That that don't show me a commitment. You telling Cena that you don't want to fuck around with her doesn't show me a commitment. This, that just shows me that you can't fuck around with those two women anymore because it's going to be brought to light. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to fuck with nobody else. Like, it, if this is what his way of showing he's going to be committed to her, and she, if she's going to run with that, so am I. I'm not going to waste my damn time. But I don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. We're going to let KD believe it. Um, so then he goes to Cena. And they have a play date with their kids or whatever. And then after that, he like, can get the nanny to come and get them so me and you can talk. I don't think this was the place to talk. Not even not in the place when we could have gone to the parking lot, could have gone to the car. Not to tell a girl that you don't want to be with her no more. You don't do this shit. If maybe he thought in his stupid ass pea brain mind that this was going to work because they were around kids. But I'm like, if you know you fucked them with a rap. Hmm. It's not going to go good. Kids involved and all. So he tells her how he loves her and how he wants to work on himself and yada, yada, yada bullshit. And then tells her that he wants to work things out with KD. She had said in the confessional, if he say he's about to work things out with KD, it's all hell about to break loose. And that's just what happened. She started going off. She started slapping him. And he like, you going to do this in front of, you know, people and shit like that? Like kids? And she was like, well, what you thought was going to happen? And I'm over here like, yeah, what you thought was going to happen with her hood right ass? Like, her, this girl got too many emotions invested in this dude. And I don't understand why. Like, girl, what else do he have to do to you? Yo ho, fuck, I don't understand why this girl won't jock to be with her so fucking bad. What is wrong with your self-esteem that you want this dude that constantly cheat on you? Had a, other twins while you were having your twins. You knew of him messing around with Carly. And you still want to be with him. You are not 16. You are not 18. You are not 21, 22. I don't fucking get it when you're supposed to be a grown-ass woman with kids and you are willing to do whatever for a man that ain't worth shit, ain't got shit. I, I, you deserve everything you get, uh, whatever her name is, because 
she dumb. She just fucking dumb. Doing all that hitting. Ugh, girl. You was immature and foul as fuck. Anyway, moving on from them. Um, Kalina and Deb. Well, you know I'm going to talk about them at the end. So Mimi meets up with, um, oh, I forgot to tell y'all about Rashida doing a photo shoot with Ashley Nicole. She did a photo shoot because she felt bad from the way she acted at, with the drama or whatever. So this was her way of making up. So she did a photo shoot with Ashley Nicole, like I guess styling her and stuff like that. Shit she should have been doing from the beginning. If you the VP and you're about your money and about making money, then you scared about this girl being around your husband. This is what you should have been doing in the first place. Getting to know her, making sure her style is right, making sure her brand was right for your money purposes, not just hers. But she styled her and she apologized to her um, for the way she acted at the hotel. Um, Ashley Nicole apologized for her actions. You know, they both was grown up enough to apologize for both of their roles and their behaviors in this whole situation. Then Ashley brought out about how she don't, you know, have no women figure around her. Her mom died five years ago, and she looked like she about, what, 23, 24, maybe? So, you know, 18, 19, her mom died, so she didn't have no woman to sit there and guide her and show her how to be a woman or whatever. And her mom committed suicide. So she had already, from that, put a wall up. So now she, like I said, she don't know how to be a woman. She doesn't know how to treat people, especially when you have that wall up and when you have a loss like that. It's hard. So um, she wants Rashida to... She guide her and be there for her and mentor her and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there like, this is the Ashley should have came out at the beginning. This is the Ashley should have, this probably would have helped your music, regardless if we like it, your singing or not. This would have helped you if you would have came off this kind of Ashley at the beginning instead of a bitch and a flirting ass thought. Like, come on, like, you brought that upon your damn self. Um... But, you know, she did was cool with that, and I just wish she would have brought, I don't know, I don't know if I would, well, maybe if she would have came off like that the first episode, then I probably wouldn't not, I probably wouldn't dislike her as much as I do, because right now I'm just, I don't, I didn't, I don't care about her or her damn music. But okay, Rashida gonna hook her up, look out for her and all that kind of stuff. Um, so Mimi goes with Dime Peace to JD. This is where we need to teach our girls about their self-worth, about who they are, about not being able to be manipulated and all kind of bullshit. This is why we need to teach our girls because this is what we get. We get people to spit stuff in their ear and hey. We all know Dime Peace came from the strip club, so I think a lot of people use that to their advantage when it comes to her. Um, and my thing is, some of y'all strippers need to get a little self-worthy. Like, oh my God, where were you raised? Like, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. I'm just, I just get irritated because I don't know. I know all strippers are not like this. I know some. Um, but. They go and see J.D., Jermaine Dupree, because y'all know he cool with Mimi. Y'all remember that YouTube video where she was with them and she was high as fuck or drunk or whatever the hell she was? Y'all remember that video, Candy from Twitter, they just remade it, that bitch was acting off um, after the first season. And so they go to him because they're real cool, and he, you know, talking to Dime Peace, he was like, you know, I heard about you, you know, I heard you a shit starter, so she like, oh, fuck, you know, I knew it was gonna get around, because her man is small, so then he's asking her about her music or whatever, and she played that disrespectful ass song, okay, so he was like, I think he said, this sound like stripper fight music, I sell out, then he was like, it sound like an intro to, you know, 
to who you are. You bring it out who you are, whatever. I don't remember him telling her that that music was good. I remember him talking all around it. You know how a person try to tell you everything but the right thing? <laughs> I, I, I might be wrong. I might just zoned out. But he was telling her everything about this music, about how she needs to perform it. Because, you know, Mimi was like, so you got a track for us? He was like, I ain't got no fucking track to just lay it around here. You know what I'm saying? That ain't how it works. But he was just basically telling her she needs to brand herself. She needs to, pro you know, promote this song and perform it and all that kind of stuff to get her name out there. But I don't remember him saying that that song was good. Mm -hmm. But, hey, she got all excited. So now she goes outside with Mimi or whatever. And Mimi, you know, give her this talk. Then Mimi pulls out a contract and tell her to take it to her lawyers or her people and have them look it over, read it over, yada, 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 and so they could work together. But I was in that like, oh, now you want to be about your business, but you, you, you didn't even sign the three-month contract deal y'all had together because when Don had said that and said you didn't have no paperwork signed with her, I'm sitting there like, you and contracts ain't your strong suit. But I do like how Mimi didn't try to just say, here, sign this or whatever. I like how Mimi told her to go look it over. And, you know, Jessica just really happy now talking about, oh, Mimi, you know, really looked out. I'm like, bitch, all she got you was a meeting. She didn't get you nothing but a meeting. But maybe that's big to some people when you can't get that kind of meeting nowhere else or whatever. But I wouldn't sign no contract just over a meeting. I'm sorry. I wouldn't. Just because it's Jermaine Dupree, but you know they friends. He probably was promoting himself just to be on Love and Hip Hop, but he really don't want to work with you. Like, I, I'm just saying, like, y'all girls need to really focus on y'all before y'all be trying to get a manager. Get you a brand to me before you get to a manager. That's all I'm saying. So let me hurry up and get to the end because this video too damn long, but I didn't mean to do that. But so anyway, Kalina goes and meet with Dad, Daphne. And, you know, because Kalina said that, you know, she was, her husband said she was moving too fast. And, you know, Deb got a reputation about her clients leaving her, which is true. Y'all remember Nikki wasn't fucking with her no more and shit like that. So it is true that Deb has a reputation. Um, so she went to Miss Deb and was talking to her and, and let her know about how Tony didn't know, think it was a good fit or whatever. And, um, but, you know, she still wasn't saying that. She just really wanted to be like, Kalina asked Deb, what can you do for my career? And it seemed like from that question right there, it triggered something with Miss Deb for some odd-ass reason because, Michaela, close my door! So, all of a sudden, she was like, you know, you acting like, it's a um, privilege. I'm getting a privilege. And she was basically like, yeah, like, I have a resume. I've known. I've done this. I've done that. I've been on tour. I've done this. You know, all this kind of stuff. So, you're not just getting, like, no brand new broad off the street. I'm a good writer. You know what I'm saying? I make my money. You know, I I'm coming with money. So, what can you do? And Deb just starts talking about this girl having financial problems and all this kind of stuff, and I'm like, really? Because I didn't see nothing wrong with what Kalina was asking. As, as you supposed to be wanting to do something for me, what can you do for me? Let me know what can you do for me. Not what I, as an artist, what I can do for you as a manager. What can you do for me? What shows can you get me? What deals can you know, what can you get me? So I didn't think nothing was wrong with what Kalina was asking Deb. Mm -hmm. But Deb started going off about, um, I, I'm getting a bag of garbage. Um, I'm not the cleanup woman. You trying to come for me. You being disrespectful. You not going to disrespect me in my own home. And Kalina is like, what the fuck? And I'm over here like, what the fuck? Like, both of y'all are 
I don't get it. But I understand what Kalina was saying. Like, damn, what is the last thing you do? And, and, and as a manager, you don't get offended by that type of shit. You just tell them, this is the last thing I did. This is what a woo woo woo. What was the whole animosity for? Maybe because she used to ask you on camera. But, I mean, that's a legitimate question for me. I, I just didn't get Miss Deb on that one. So at the end, you know, you got Rashida and Kalina. They at the club and they drinking and they having a nice time. She's supporting her husband, so she's working in the club since she ain't doing nothing else. So they talking about that. So then Kalina is trying to tell Rashida um, kind of what happened with her and Miss Deb and was just saying it didn't go right or whatever. But before she really can get anything out, Tammy arrives like she queen bitch or something. And Tammy was, you know, they was, hey, how you doing? Everybody's supposed to be cool and cordial. And all of them supposed to be cool with each other. And all of a sudden, she was like, um, what happened between you and Deb? And she was like, well, you know, I don't think I should have to explain this because it's my personal business. But, you know, so she was telling her what happened. And Tammy felt like she was disrespecting Deb and all this kind of stuff and trying to check Kalina. And Kalina is like, first of all, I shouldn't have to explain myself to you, but I'm going to explain to myself to you. And this is what happened. And um, they just start arguing and it kind of went left. And I was just sitting there like, Tammy, you wrong. Because that was a business meeting. So regardless if Deb came home pissed off, mad, or whatever, that was a business meeting. That wasn't a personal meeting. That wasn't them getting together as homegirls and they was going at it. Regardless if, like, bitch, are you going to, if her and Russell Simmons got into it, would you go over to, up in Russell Simmons' office and check him? If her and Diddy got into it, would you go up in Diddy's office and check him? Like, for real? Then you go into Kalina's, another place of business for Kalina's and try to check her? Why did you do it? The security was there? I don't know. And then Rashida was pissing me off talking about she understand where Tammy is coming from because that family. That's why you motherfuckers doing stuff out your house. This because y'all don't know business etiquette. Like, really? Really? I, 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 all y'all bitches are being checked. And now Kalina and Rashida going to get into it next week because Rashida, you wrong for trying to take Deb and Tammy's side for that one because Tammy was all the way fucking wrong. Oh, no. They didn't get into it, but they got into it because Tammy is going to tell Rashida that Kalina was talking about her. And I think instead of Rashida asking her about it and getting the facts, she just went on Tammy's side and tried to check Kalina, and it's not going to go the way y'all you planned. And, um, Tammy, like I said, you don't want it with Kalina. Kalina was ready. Like, bitch, I will fuck you up. And I was wanting people to move out the way so she can get fucked up. I'm just saying, for real, for real. Um, I just felt like Deb and Tammy was all the way wrong from that situation. Anyway, that's my review for, um, Love and Hip Hop Season 4, Episode 12. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I'm your girl, Miss Nika. Everything I do social media is by the ghetto view, T-H-A, not T-H-E. Make sure you check out my cousin, Mike D, and also Ashley Miller, and all of my other YouTube fans. You guys know who I watch, Tiki44, Buzzworthy TV, Squeaky Jones, Tam G. You know my fam. So check them out. Subscribe to their channel, and we'll talk to you later. Peace out.